I think uh, we stopped somewhere after creativity. Now, for the overall personality development, which we were uh, discussing about, time management skills. Okay, e even in workplace, whether it is related to education or in the workplace. any other aspect for that matter uh, skills of managing the time is quite important the teacher as well as the student so even we ourselves as a teacher should be able to manage our time and even we should uh, teach these uh, skills in uh, students also we know uh, today under the modern day pressure we have uh, different differing demands all of us face in our professional as well as our personal also academic lives and then it can sometimes seem like there are never enough hours in a day means many of the times we end up saying 24 hours is not enough for us in a day because we will not be able to complete our work but this should not be happening because we know there are 24 hours in a day and we know for, apart from our personal time what is the time available for us for our academic work and then the time we can give for our professional development the time we have to give for our students the five time we can give for our colleagues or any other meetings in the organization and other organizational work so we should be able to plan all this in the available time we have so this is where we say uh, we require these skills of managing our time which is available to us because we will not be able to create more time for ourselves so whatever time is available we have to manage the time available to us so we should know how to effectively manage our time this is very crucial in helping us to regain a sense of balance as also if we are able to manage our time that also reduces our stress in the work because stress in work also affects our personal health also stress in work affects the relationship we have with our colleagues that stress also affects the relationship in our family also so in order to reduce these levels of stress time management is an effective technique which we will have to uh, master all so this refers to whenever we refer to management skills in time we are referring to organizing and planning our time planning how long we will be spending what are the activities we will have to go through in a particular day there are two types of management one long term planning keeping the long term plan in mind we will have to again prepare short term plans with the short term plans we will have to again go for daily plans so how do we manage our time we first have a list of activities which we have for a particular period let me say this month what are the activities we have to complete then if we have to complete so many activities in this particular month or this academic year then what are the short term uh, plans we will have to make in order to acquire these short term plans uh, what is the time we will have to give daily for these activities so this is what we have to manage when we are managing time so when we go for time management these are a list of uh, activities which we have given what i want you to is number each one of them you see i have not numbered them all these are equal okay these are the things we have to do if we have to manage time now what i want you to do is prioritize okay you have to number them whichever you consider is most useful to manage time number it as one okay which is the second one which is which stands priority when you are managing your time number it as two okay so i'll just read out what all we have to do in order to manage time it's for you to number them now the first thing there may be interruptions suppose we have planned this within one hour i'll be finishing off some correction of my student okay but immediately maybe they will be called for a meeting in the uh, college when you are doing some work so you have to expect some interruptions also in between okay so being prepared for interruptions is one thing when we manage time then the second is do the least pleasant things first means many a time uh, we may not be interested in doing some work we are we may not be motivated in doing something so how do i plan do i keep it to the last or do i first finish off the things which i don't like so that even after i am tired if something i am interested i can take it up even after a long days work so how do i plan 
so this is the second one do the least pleasant things first earlier in the day then the third be prepared to change your plan sometimes we would have planned something then we can't strictly adhere to it so are we prepared to change our plan also that is the one then make an action plan for every job even a very small job which i have to complete i prepare an action plan the other one prioritize and do important thing first okay so whatever activities i have to complete today i make a list of it from that i again prioritize which has to be done first okay so prioritizing according to the importance and according to the deadlines with which we have to complete the work the next keep a log of how you spend your time okay so daily how uh, after what time i have got up in the morning what time i have started work and how much of time i have spent in what type of activities keeping a log log of all this so that tomorrow if i go through the same thing i will see where have i wasted my time where i could have improved my organization or planning of my time that can be looked after afterwards okay so keeping a log of how we spend our time then being realistic about what we can achieve many a times i can just say okay i will finish all this work within one one hour or two hours but we have to be realistic whether we can really finish that particular work in that particular time and sometimes we need our colleagues also to work with us if it may be a team work so if it is a team work and others have to join me whether i can take work extract work from everybody and ask them to join me in that particular time and whether i can complete so it whenever we are planning we have to try to be realistic okay uh, not keep uh, our plans in such a way that it cannot be achieved at all long time if we go on doing this that will in, uh, lead to frustration in our work if we are uh, not able to achieve something and sometimes if it happens for a long time maybe even uh, we may lose confidence in whatever work we do okay so this should not set in so that is why we have to be very realistic when we are setting our goals we have to set it in such a way that it should be able for us to achieve it then the next is make a list of all the activities which we have to complete on that particular day and then again going on ticking them as we finish them off okay then think about the best time of the day for each job we may have a list of jobs which we have to complete then we will have to think of what is the best time in the day when we can complete it okay then if we have stopped being effective then change the activities so this is the list of things we will have to uh, consider when we are managing our time so may, uh, maybe keeping it in priority depends on the nature of work which we are doing so th that is why i have not numbered it uh, when you are adopting in your work or asking your students to adopt when they are managing times okay they can prioritize them according to their order okay now there is a small test here which you can take how good is your time management okay there are certain statements here for every statement after getting the score let us decide if your time management is on the uh, better side or whether we will have to improve our time management okay uh, just uh, be true when you are answering there are five options given for every statement you can either answer that not at all you have never done this okay and rarely you may do this or sometimes or very often we do this or very often or very frequently i do this okay the first thing the tasks i work on are the one with highest priority means now i have to do my work then i will take up a task which i feel has the highest priority or if i feel that no this is uh, not a highest priority even if it can go for tomorrow then i will postpone it for tomorrow okay so whatever task i take up will be of highest priority now just uh, say whether it is not at all rarely sometimes often very often or you can even number it 1 2 3 4 5 if you are saying not at all give one rarely give two sometimes three if you are saying often put a score of 4 very often you can put a score of 5 okay 
if you have scored written the score i will go to the second one the second statement says i find myself completing tasks at the last minute or asking for extensions this happens many times because at the last minute i have we have to send a post or something today speed post will be going off at 3 o'clock and when it is 5 minutes to 3 i will just complete my work and that the last time i will rush to the post office to send it okay does it happen never happen to me or rarely happens to me okay just write down then the third one i set aside my time for planning and scheduling i've seen people saying uh, instead of sitting and planning and spending time there i can start off my work so i will not sit for to plan and schedule that itself i lose half an hour daily okay or whether i really set aside a time every day for 10 minutes in the morning i will just sit and plan and schedule all my work for the whole day okay not at all rarely sometimes often and very often so this if you say not at all sometimes three often and very often we find okay the fourth one i know how much time i spend on each of the various tasks i do okay at the end of day even if i sit to analyze i will know how much time i have spent for every task today okay so that i will be able to again plan tomorrow if i am going for work then which work i have spent most of the time whether that much time i have spent is really useful whether that activity is worth that much of spending of time you can analyze it later so i will know how much time i spend on each of the various task okay again rate it as 1 2 3 or 4 or 5 then fifth one i deal with interruptions okay there may be others who may just come and sit with you for a talk for 10 or 15 minutes when you are doing your work maybe you find daily they are doing it and there you are wasting your time so you should be able to deal with such interruptions which come in between okay whether i deal with the interruptions then i use goal setting the sixth one i use goal setting to decide what tasks and activities i should work on whether you set your goals and then decide what tasks you have to do in order to achieve your goals okay then the seventh i leave contingency time in my schedule to deal with the unexpected okay when i am scheduling my time i keep some time apart so that something unexpected comes then i should be able to complete that also whether i do it or not or whether i rarely do it or often i do it then i prioritize my task i am working as high priority medium priority or low priority okay grading whatever activities we take as those having high priority medium and low okay the ninth one when i am given a new assignment i analyze it for importance and prioritize it accordingly okay then 10th i am stressed about deadlines and commitments I means suppose i have a deadline there are people whom i have seen no deadlines coolly they do their work and they finish it off something is given to them and their deadline is set they said within this day within this moment you have to return it back a deadline is given they get stressed when they are working even though they have sufficient time once deadlines are set they are stressed up in work they are not able to manage their time properly okay so does it happen with you always or rarely or not at all 11th one distractions keep me from working on do i get distracted when i'm 12th i have to take work home in order to get it done hmm. you see many of them 
just complete their work in their colleges and go back they don't take it home okay there are people who do not finish their work at home uh, sorry college but take it home very regularly also so how often does it happen to you do you never take work to home or very rarely or very often take the work home the 13th one i prioritize my to do list okay a list of things to do i prioritize them or prepare an action program for that do i never do it or i always do it that is what is the scale okay 1 2 3 4 and 5 then 14th one i confirm my priorities with my seniors suppose i prioritize my work and i feel somebody is an expert or who has done this work already do i sit and discuss with them when i am prioritizing my work maybe they are seniors maybe they are principals in the college okay with the experts who have already done that do i sit and confirm my priorities with them then the last and the 15th one before i take on a task i check that the results will be worth the time i put in okay so before i will decide what task i am doing and what time i am setting whether i will really think the results which will come out of my work is really worth the time i will be spending on it okay so again 1 2 3 4 and 5 now with this add up the score you have got on all the 15 if you have added the score we will interpret the score you have got okay if you have a got a score between 46 to 75 you are managing your time very effectively okay so you are good at time management skills if you are not that i will do it if you are really doing it already then you are managing your time well if not you will have to plan to do them okay if your score is between 31 to 45 sometimes you are good but there is still space for you to improve and if your score is between 15 to 30, okay the good thing is that you still have an opportunity that you can improve your effectiveness at work okay and for your long term success you have to realize that you have to fundamentally improve your time management skills so if it is between 15 to 30 try to improve upon try to prioritize work plan your schedule daily in the morning set your goals okay then think whether you have any interruptions or distractions which is which is distracting you doing your work how to reduce all of them okay there are some things called the time wasters so you have to identify which are your time wasters hmm? and just look behind and see whether you are preparing a log of all the activities you are doing daily okay so and then whether you are uh, ready to work with deadlines set for yourself others need not set deadline for us we ourselves have to set deadlines within which we have to complete our work whether we are doing it okay so all these things will be good if we are managing our time i think most of you will be uh, somewhere above uh, 30 for, uh, 40 itself hmm? because because i have seen most i have seen most 49 okay yeah 46 and above is a good score 48 also is a good score anybody above 60 above 60 is a very good score actually okay but anyway above 46 you are managing your time effectively now i move on to another skill we know teachers now are stressed with so many type of activities in this college and then it's not just that you are taking one hour of class we know how much efforts we have to put when we are taking an hour of class okay uh, ap approaching the students uh, dealing with the because it's not just teaching and coming out in the class we have to manage the class also we have to manage individual students they may come with their different personal problems sometimes we should be able to act as a guidance give them guidance even in sometimes there are students who require counseling sometimes there are students who require uh, us to guide them even in their personal uh, 
uh, aspects also they will have personal problems we will have to guide them there so there is so much of work a, a teacher has maintaining relationship with colleagues okay, maintaining a work culture in the institution okay so teachers normally are stressed but we should be able to manage our stress because we know sometimes stress not only leads to only psychological problems stress also nowadays is leading to physical problems and ill health among teachers also so we should be able to manage our stress very well what is stress when we feel that we cannot handle our activities okay more than we were doing it before that leads to stress okay when we are stressed the body responds as though we are in danger okay uh, you are very you might have seen suppose you are a, a small example suppose you have to catch a train let me say hmm? uh, you will be walking fast but if you see the train coming on the platform sometimes you feel that you cannot keep your leg forward at all hmm? uh, this many of us would have experienced and sometimes we will be thinking we are good we will be able to plan our things well but if there is a deadline and you are stressed up then you feel that your brain is not working at all your thoughts have come to a still okay so when we are stressed the body responds in a way when it responds when it is in danger okay we know when a when our body reacts to danger then there are some physical uh this thing uh, reactions which will happen in our body chemical reactions which will happen in our body it makes hormones that will speed up our heartbeat it makes us breathe faster then it makes us burst our energy use more of energy and this is what we call the flight or the fight stress response there are two things when we st are stress we react in two ways the first thing is we try to fight against it the second one response is flight flight is just leave it okay we see when we are stressed sometimes we work hard to overcome it or sometimes when we get so much stress then we think that we will just leave it we will leave to whatever will happen okay we go with this flight response also okay so two ways we respond but having some amount of stress is really useful also because if we do not have a small stress also or even a small level of anxiety then our body will not respond to work at all it doesn't work there is a graph okay uh, it shows even the anxiety level if the performance will go on increasing okay they are not anxious at all about their examination they don't study at all they have a little level of anxiety as the anxiety level increases we see that that put in efforts also and they perform better also but there is one optimum level of anxiety or stress where they perform at the highest level but you go on increasing the stress further more after the opt optimum level the flight response starts they will start losing the interest and then performance will drop also okay so there is some amount of stress which is said to be optimal which is also you useful okay so it can help if we need to work hard or react quickly so that is why we say that we don't say that stress is entirely uh, uh, should be evaded but stress to a normal level or an optimum level is useful but too much of stress and too long stress is not good for health if stress happens for very often or lasts for too long it can have bad effects also okay you might have seen if you are stressed for a long time we see that headache, we get headaches sometimes there is also an upset in the stomach there is many of them experience back pain also and there are many of them who experience trouble in sleeping we have seen people who are stressed do not get sleep for more than 3 to 4 uh, two to 3 days also
then it weakens our immune system so that is why you have seen i uh, must be you have seen in the uh, televisions nowadays especially during this time of the pandemic when we had this covid there were many uh, yoga classes which were on the television and there were many doctors who came up and said it's not only uh, just avoiding you have to improve your immune system okay your immune system is weakened if there is high levels of stress okay so this weakening of the immune system will make it harder if we have to fight off diseases also so it can also make us moody and tensed and also make us depressed and frustrated sometimes if this happens then our relationships also in our workplace and also in the family may suffer so and then uh, it may lead us to perform low at our work so we should be able to manage our stress and also we should be able to avoid stress as far as possible how do we avoid stress one thing we have to accept that today's modern life with our deadlines are stressful okay it's a fact of life for most of us in our workplace there are many a times where even in the families relationships are stressed up okay so we should be able to get rid of it and also we should be able to look for different ways where we can lower our stress levels how do we lower it the first thing is time management which we sp spoke of just before this we should be able to learn different measures and ways and techniques we should be able to adopt in order to manage our time if we get more done with less stress then we have to make a schedule for all of our activities so we have to think and prioritize our work prioritize which is more important and which we have to finish first the th uh, second thing is we have to first take care of ourselves take care of our health first have plenty of, of sufficient rest then smoking has to be avoided limit uh, alcohol all these have to be adopted then try new ways of thinking when we find ourselves uh, where we think that we are starting to worry then we have to try to stop such types of thoughts sometimes the other option is to once there is something which is worrying us we express it outside then the stress levels come down so if we are not able to express it with somebody then we should be at least having the habit of writing it down okay so any worries or stresses uh, uh, causing uh, stressors we have we have to write down uh, down so that we will let them go out okay sometimes we should also be able to learn to say a no uh, because every time we go on even if we are stressed we are trying to help out someone then we ourselves may not be able to uh, manage stress so sometimes we will also be uh, we should learn to say no to others speaking up is one thing okay many a times if we do not speak out then that creates more stress and then it also uh, develops negative feeling in us assertive communication is very important whenever we are communicating we have to be assertive we should show that this is the decision we have made and then we have to be assertive about expressing whatever thoughts and uh, feelings we have and then sometimes if we are not able to do anything we need some help we have to ask for help also okay many times we see people who uh, however much they are stressed they do not want to ask help from anybody okay this is wrong okay we should be also ready to help others in when they require us and when we require somebody we also have to ask for help we have to maintain a strong network of relationship among family and fr friends okay this is one outlet where we can express our feelings or any stressors we have so maintaining good and strong network with family and friends also will help us manage our stress better okay so how to relieve our stress exercise a regular exercise daily okay keeping a certain time in our time management or scheduling for exercise helps us to manage our stress okay uh, if not uh, trying for other types of exercises and yoga walking is one great way because a uh, walking outside it's not walking on a treadmill walking outside in nature okay reduces is a good uh, stress buster actually then writing if something is bothering us we have to write about it okay 
so that is one uh, lab, technique of reducing our stress and letting our feeling out you are feeling something worried you are uh, feeling angry okay and then you want to express your joy express it with somebody whom you trust okay it's not expressing it with everybody whoever i trust and whomever i feel will help me out with managing my emotions i will have to express my feelings out with such people and then have a hobby okay learning music it it doesn't mean that you we have to become good singers or we have to be, become good instrumentalists but learning music and then uh, singing is or uh, uh, playing some instrument is known to studies have shown that it will reduce stress okay so having a hobby then volunteering uh, volunteering uh, ourselves for some work and helping others is also known to be a good stress reliever even just listening to music for some uh, amount of time daily also helps us to reduce stress then we should also learn different ways of relaxing our physical body like uh, having breathing exercises then muscle relaxation then we also have uh, massage and aroma therapy yoga okay uh, there are other relaxing exercises which we can follow then focusing on the present not living in the past not living in the future because we know past is over we cannot change it future is not still in our hands it is today which is in our hands okay so that is we have to learn to live in the present so try meditation then uh, uh, listen to relaxing music look for humor in life daily when we are going around there is so much humor around us but we do not have time to observe it and then just laugh around okay so try to look for humor in life laughter we know is the best medicine and the stress best stress buster okay be with people who will have positive effect on you there are people who will have negative effects who create a negative aura around themselves who always have negative thoughts try to avoid such people in life there are people who are always optimistic and then positive in life try to have pe such people around in your life okay now there is a small scale which you can take here this will help reduce our stress levels now this question air will show how stress affects our different parts of life you will have to just tick on the uh, answer there are certain questions you will have to score 5 4 3 2 1 okay 5 if you are doing this or feeling it on at least 5 days a week you will have to give 4 that is most of the time which means at least 3 days a week 3 if it is sometimes okay somewhere around 1 day a week almost never if it is less than 2 hours a week and never if you never have experienced it okay now is this visible to you this uh, stress indicator questionnaire no ma'am no one one second yes madam yeah now was uh, it visible yes ma'am yeah yeah see the first indicator here is the physical indicator okay what are the physical indicators of and how often do you experience it so put in your writing as a physical indicator if it is always almost always give a 5 if it is most of the time give 4 most of the time means at least 3 uh, days in a week and some time is somewhere between some two days almost never is only just hours in a week never means never you experience okay the first one my body feels tense all over 
does it happen always most of the time like that give 5 4 3 2 and 1 then i have nervous sweating or sweaty palms some of them always have this okay the third one i have a re hard time feeling really relaxed okay means feeling relaxed you have a hard time if you want to feel relaxed you never get time to relax then i have severe or chronic lower back pain then i get severe or chronic means very often regularly i get headaches 5 4 3 2 and 1 5 is always okay then i get tension or muscle spasms in my face jaw neck or shoulders muscle spasms uh, if you experience then if it is never just put one my stomach feels upset then i get skin rashes or itching i get sharp chest pains when i am physically active then i lack physical energy then when i am resting my heart beats more than 100 times a minute next because of my busy schedule i miss at least two meals during the week means do you skip meals because of your busy schedule then i don't really plan my meals for balanced nutrition means at your food time you have to just fill in your stomach so you eat something i never bother about whether i am taking sufficient protein whether i am taking sufficient vitamins okay whether my i have a balanced diet and having sufficient nutrition whether you plan or not then i spend less than 3 hours a week for a week less than 3 hours getting vig vigorous physical exercise like maybe running or playing some game or swimming or anything now whatever score you have put write down for physical indicator this is your score we will just interpret the score at the end did you total all the scores yeah, yeah. if you have yes, to total huh. yes ma'am Now I go for the next one, the sleep indicators. Okay. I have trouble falling asleep. Means even if I sleep for so much of a time, if you do not get sleep at all. Then I take pills to get to sleep. I have repeated nightmares or bad dreams. I wake up at least once in the middle of the night for no apparent reason. Means even without any reason, if you wake up. Then, no matter how much sleep I get, when I awake, I still feel tired. Okay, Even after a good sleep and you get up, you still feel tired. Okay. Now, with these five, just add up your score. That is the sleep indicator score. The next category of stress indicator, we move on to the behavioral indicators. Okay. 
I stutter or get tongue tied when I talk to other people. Then I try to work while I am eating lunch. Means even while having lunch, I'll be working. Even attending to phone, speaking to somebody when I am having lunch. Okay, all this. Then I have to work late. Late night also we work. The next, I go to work even when I feel sick. If you are sick, we want to work and go to work. Then I have to bring work home. Many times assignments we bring home and complete them. Then I drink alcohol or use any medications to relax. This uh, next one is also related to that only. Then at least once during week, many of them go for uh, betting for money or any such activities. Then after dinner, I spend more time alone or watching TV than I do talking with my family or friends. Means instead of spending time with family and friends, we spend time alone watching TV like that. Then I arrive at work late. Coming to work late. Then at least once in a week, you either have a shout or a fight with the co-worker or a supervisor. Maybe with the colleague or something, somebody. So these are the behavior indicators. Just total them up. Then we have the emotional indicators. I have found the best way. This is an emotional indicator. I have found the best way. Somebody has to mute. Yeah, I have found the best way to deal with hassles and problems. The best way you have found is to avoid thinking or talking about them. Okay, best way to avoid problems is to avoid thinking or talking about the problems. Then I have trouble remembering things. Then I feel anxious or frightened about problems I can't really describe. Means if you're facing problems and you really can't describe the problem, then you become anxious or frightened about it. Then I worry a lot. Then it's important for me not to show my emotions to my family. Means you never express your feelings or emotions with your family. It's hard for me to relax at home. It is best that I don't tell even my closest friend how I am really feeling. Means I don't express my feelings even to my close friend. Then I find it hard to talk when I get excited. Means if I am excited, I cannot talk. Then I have temper outbursts which I cannot control. 
sometimes they people can't just control and go for an outburst of their emotions then when people criticize me even in a friendly constructive way i feel offended means even if it is for our good somebody is giving us a feedback i feel offended i feel ex extremely sensitive and irritable my emotions change unpredictably and without any apparent reason means the emotions are unpredictable i feel i really can't trust anyone andre yar melu namke ittkolak agala nange anta ansutte the next i feel like other people don't understand me andre yaru nanna arthane maadkolala anta artha idavalla aa tar i feel like other people don't understand me i really don't feel good about myself then generally i am not optimistic about my future andre nange eno olledey agala yavaglo ee tara i feel very tired and disinterested in life then impulsive behavior has caused me problems ಅಂದರೆ ಏನು ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಇಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಆಗಿ ರಿಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫೆಲ್ಟ್ ಸೋ ಬ್ಯಾಡ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಥಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಹಸ್ ಆ್ಯಪನ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ನೆವರ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಐ ಕಾಂಟ್ ಸಾಲ್ವ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಸೀಕ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಷನಲ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಏನೋ ಒಂದು ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ನನಗೆ ಬಗೆಹರಿಸಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಆದರೂ ನಾನು ಯಾರದು ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ವೃತ್ತಿಪರರ ಸಹಾಯ ತಗೊಳ್ಳಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಆಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಪ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಇಮೋಷನಲ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟರ್ ಓಕೆ ನಾವು ವಿ ಗೋ ಟು ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿ ಹಿಯರ್ that is the personal habits of a person okay i spend less than 3 hours a week working on a hobby of my mind of mine yavdo one hobby anta ittkondo varadalli 3 gantegina kadime nan hobby mel nan spend martini indre then the second one i spend less than 1 hour a week writing personal letters writing a diary or writing anything creatively like maybe a poem maybe a drawing maybe a cartoon something creative writing spending less than 1 hour a week okay then the third one i spend less than 30 minutes a week taking talking casually with my neighbors nowadays we see we don't have time to even talk to our neighbors also so talking casually the next i lack time to read the daily newspaper then i watch television for entertainment more than 1 hour a day i drive in a motorcycle faster than the speed limit for the excitement and challenge of it then i spend less than 30 minutes a day working towards a life goal or ambition of my mind andre nanna ambitions ge 
ಅವಸ್ಕರನೇ ನಾನು ಮೂವತ್ ನಿಮಿಷಕ್ಕಿನ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಟೈಮ್ ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂತ ದೆನ್ ಮೈ ಡೇ ಟು ಡೇ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಫೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಮೈ ರಿಲಿಜಿಯಸ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ then the last one on personal habits when i feel stressed it is difficult for me to plan time and activities to constructively release my stress means when i feel stressed it is difficult to plan time to constructively relieve my stress total all this up of your personal habits now this is a stress level questionnaire now we go with the scores here look into the physical indicators if your total is 22 and below that okay then you have a very low stress for physical indicator 30 is medium stress 38 and above high stress 48 and above is very high stress if it is 54 and above it is a danger level of stress okay then for sleep indicators 5 and below a very low stress 8 and above is medium stress 10 and above high 12 and above very high 14 and above it is above the danger mark for behavior indicators you are somewhere around 18 then again low stress 27 to 36 is medium 36 is high 45 very high 50 plus is the dangerous level emotional indicators 21 is low 29 is medium sorry ma'am 91 please mute the mic somebody has to mute your mic okay 37 is high 46 and above very high and if you are above 55 you should be very careful your emotional indicators are showing that your stress level is above the danger level okay then for personal habits 9 and below is really low 9 uh, uh, stress level 15 to 20 is medium, 20 is high, 24 and above is very high and 30 and above is a danger mark. Okay. So, if look into the areas where you have very high or cross the danger level, these are the problem areas you should focus on if you are developing a management plan for your stress. Okay. If you are everywhere below the medium level mark, then it is really good that you are managing your stress well. Okay. So you should just focus on whether which area, whether the physical indicator or the sleep indicator, which area is showing high level of stress and that area you can manage. Okay. So how do you manage building stress resources, stress prevention through aerobic exercise, relaxation, nutrition and sleep. Okay. And one thing you can try to fill in and see what are the warning signs you are getting through this stress level questionnaire. You can make a list of them. You can make a list of what are the causes of your stress and you can seriously think about how to reduce all of them. This is the right time. Otherwise, if we go on, we do not try to analyze what are the stresses in our life, then maybe we will reach a, uh, uh, we will reach one particular time where we will not be able to come back uh, if there are uh, very harmful effects even on the physical health also okay so it's the right time that we just look into all this then um, after analyzing the stress level and then thinking of different techniques to reduce the stress and planning it i think these are the uh, uh, time management and stress management, both of them, most of the times go together. If we are to able to manage our time well, then we should be able to also to reduce our stress. The other aspect of personality development is cultural awareness because any personality cannot be uh, away from the culture with which we 
live or the cultural in which uh, of the society in which we live so the cultural awareness also should be developed what do we mean by cultural awareness cultural awareness is all about recognizing and understanding that we all have different values because each and everybody's culture is different values of every culture is different so we should understand that all cultures have different values and each of us are shaped in our diverse cultural backgrounds teachers as teachers we have we should be able to understand this better because students come from different cultural backgrounds we should respect each of everybody's background there we should be respectful of others accept other people's opinions rights and feelings even if their feelings are different from ours even if their opinion differ from our opinion we should allow ourselves to develop as a more successful personal and professional relationship and then we will be able to benefit from the cultural diversity in the classroom the other aspect of cultural uh, sorry personality development is self awareness and respect to other individuals building self awareness and self awareness is nothing but knowing our weaknesses and strengths knowing our own abilities knowing our attitude means knowing ourselves better and having a good self concept of ourselves so building self awareness and cultural awareness will encourage us to think about the importance of being respectful to others okay recognizing our own strengths and weakness and recognizing our characteristics of our personality that is the personality trait is as important as understanding what makes us happy and can prepare us for the choices we make in the future so uh, developing a good self concept of ourselves is very important so how well do you know yourself just make a list of this what makes me feel respected means what characteristics of myself do you think of yourself do you think will make others respect me nanna yava gunagalu bere evrinda nanage respect tan kodutte annu adannu one the list maadkoli then what happens when i feel respected maybe emotionally physically socially do you feel very joyful okay that way then what makes me feel disrespected nanna yava guna nanige nanage bere urinda respect na tarodilla okay that you have to make a list then what will happen if i feel that i am not respected how would i react if i feel that somebody is not respecting me either my student or someone my colleague is not respecting so what should i do to change this disrespect into respect yavaro nannana respect maartta illa andre yavadike maartilla idanna nanu convert change maadi avaru nannana respect maadu hage maadbekadre nannalli yen changes nan maadkolbeku annodanna we will have to list down okay now here you will have to number the following which i give uh, as uh, okay respect for your elders your community order them which will you do first prioritize respect the environment respect the authority respect your parents respect your teachers respect the opponents in sport or in any competition a competitor do you respect them do we respect people with who have different opinions different beliefs who come from different cultural background do we respect them do we respect people who are less fortunate than us okay so just look into this we should have or develop respect for all of their individual personality characteristics okay and we have to uh, value everybody's cultural background and the diversity from which they come from so when we uh, let me not go with this empathy is one more characteristics of a personality okay what is empathy teachers should have have this 
uh, ability to empathize more empathy is an action sympathy and empathy are different okay students or anybody do not need sympathy what they need is empathy from teachers empathy is the action of understanding it is being aware of being sensitive to and vicariously experiencing the feelings and thoughts and experience of another means we should be able to stand in the place of the other suppose there is a situation we should think not just saying what he did is wrong he should not have behaved in that way this is not the thing we have to put ourselves in their situation and then think if we were in that situation what way would we have behaved maybe even we would have behaved in the similar manner in which the others are behaving okay and the, maybe even we communicate in the way the others are communicating so putting ourselves in the shoe of the others and imagining ourselves behaving in the place of the other this is what is empathy so it is the ability of a teacher to share another person's feeling share their emotions as if they are our own emotions and feelings okay it's the ability to identify with or understand the perspective of others experiences understand their motivations of another individual to comprehend and share another individual's emotional state means we are trying to understand the emotional state of the others in their own perspective avara drushtikonadalli avara bhavanegalanna artha maadkolavantaddu aa ability enide that is what is empathy now there are certain pictures here shown okay you can unmute yourself and see uh, can you identify the emotions which with uh, of the these facial expressions are showing the first one what is the emotion expressed tumba khushi le raha hu happy okay being, there are two things being happy and joyful joy is different happy is different what is that first ex- first and second expression first one is happy madam happy second one joy okay it it is a higher level of happiness or joy expression of joy okay the second row first one sad okay seriousness thinking seriously thinking or worrying worried anxiety anxious and worried okay there can be a mixture of emotions also if you see hmm? and the last one anger anger one emotion idya ali anger cunning yeah maybe thinking of something <laughs> negative right that negativeness yeah. is shown in the just look at the eyebrow uh, yes, Uh, there is something cunning which is being thought of okay uh, and then something you see the eye uh, uh, it's cu- he is curious also about something hmm, planning for something okay so a mixture of emotions also can be expressed in the face we say face is the index of the mind okay however much we try to cover up our emotions cover up the thinking which we are doing our face our eyes and the if we are able to understand our eyebrows okay and the uh, the, the lips everything community should be able to identify the emotions of the people just looking at the facial expressions the setting of the eyebrow the eye okay we will be able to recognize their emotions now we have another four here the first one sad sadness Sad. yes yes the second anxiety surprised surprised exclaim extremely surprised then the third one crying crying see there are the way the hand is kept both of them are showing similar ones but they differ right shocking both oh my god yeah oh my god is correct are both nervous both are non nervous 
Narvas. Fourth one is showing uh, victory symbol. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. The fourth one is, one is being surprised with a victory. The third one, there is fear. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Extreme fear. Okay. So this is how okay. as teachers, we should be able to analyze the emotions and the feeling of expressions through the facial expressions itself. We should be able to identify the emotions. Okay. This is what uh, em identifying emotions is one component of empathy. See, one is showing pain somewhere. Some extreme pain. Hello. Then, no. uh, there is some pain. Okay. Then uh, what is this showing picture? Is it an Ashcharya Chakitra? Ashcharya is there. Ashcharya is there. Ashcharya is there. Santosha is there. Worry. Worry. Okay. Worry. Then here? Fear. 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 Fear, then surprise. Huh. Surprise with a yeah. not a happy surprise, but with fear. Okay. Yes. Sharp this surprise. one. The Both last one. And angry. 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 And the tumba get to cope idea. Not. Not. Get to cope idea. Not. 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 Anger. Not. 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 It's not that only children have this. Ni veshto sari dodo rali kuda i naughtiness bharta anger rali. Sumne kopa ilde edru no kopa bandira or tarat muka expression torsa kokta re. Adu gotta gata i nijwaglo kopa bandila pretension re. Yes, pretension of anger ida idu nijwaglo kopa bandila anadu kandal gotta gata namge. Right? Or eshte kopa bandira ang act maada dhru no. Okay? So this we should be able to identify. Okay? So uh, these are some, if you just see, this is what we use these emojis for. Mm, uh, showing of joy, acceptance, and showing that we are aware of what you are doing. Being angry, being sadness, okay? Then being rejected, surprised, fearful, okay? All these expressions, we should be able to empathize and identify these emotions even if the person wants to hide it, especially the eye shows the emotions very well. Okay, That as teachers, we should be able to identify. We should also train our students to uh, empathize themselves. Okay, So this is what is about uh, as teachers, not just transmitting knowledge to the students. It is our duty to develop all these skills in our students and then developing all these abilities in children or our students so that they develop a balanced and a dynamic personality. Okay. So uh, referring to this, I think now I would just move on a little to identifying our own personality as teachers. Okay. Now this is what is called the teacher personality spectrum. If you just look at the triangle here, there are three types of personalities of teachers. One is the authoritative type. Now, who teachers agi, eshto sari class ali atwa students jate nama sammandagalan nitkolvaga authoritative agi uh, behave marti, right? So, teachers can be classified as authoritative teacher. Then, teachers who have passion for teaching, teachers who have passion towards students, okay? So, idu vandu category, that is the other extreme of the triangle. Then we have on the other end of the triangle, personability. Andre, relationships na valle da, relationships na students jute, colleagues jute maintain maado antaha yurana. That personality spectrum is called the personability spectrum. Okay. Now with this triangle, we have six types of teacher personalities. The first who is fully authoritative is said to be a sergeant. Characteristics one on type of maybe you are also a mixture of one one and two. belong group Maybe sometimes you feel uh, authoritative I am passionate also towards my profession. I have this also. So it can be a combination of all this also. Sometimes 
ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಅಥಾರಿಟೇಟಿವ್ ಅಂತನೂ ಕೂಡ ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದು ಅಂಡ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಮೋರ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಥಾರಿಟಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಪರ್ಸನಬಲ್ ಅಂತನೂ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ಸೊ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಫೈ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಗೋ ಆನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಟೀಚರ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಡೂ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಅದನ್ನ ನೋಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗೋಣ ಈ ಅಥಾರಿಟೇಟಿವ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಸಾರ್ಜೆಂಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಅ ರಿಲಕ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಟೀಚರ್ ಅ ಬಡ್ಡಿ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಟೀಚರ್ ಪ್ಯಾರೆಂಟಲ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ಪ್ಯಾರೆಂಟಲ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಮೇಂಟೈನಿಂಗ್ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ರಿಲೇಶನ್ಶಿಪ್ ವಿತ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆ ತರ ಅ ವಿಸಾರ್ಡ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಟೀಚರ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಲೂಫ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಮೋರ್ ಅಥಾರಿಟೇಟಿವ್ ಕೂಡ ಅಂಡ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ಯಾಶನೇಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಜಾಬ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಅನ್ ಅ ಲೂಫ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಅನಲೈಸ್ ಟು ವಿಚ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಸೊ ವೇರ್ ಡು ಯು ಫಾಲ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಟೀಚರ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ರಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ನಾವು ವಿಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿ ದ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸಾರ್ಜೆಂಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟೀಚರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಅಥಾರಿಟೇರಿಯನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ರಮ್ ಓಕೆ you can imagine a stereotypical gym teacher who will just be giving commands and rules and the students will have to just follow we don't empathize ourselves we don't respond to the situation of the child or respond the only thing the sergeant type of a teacher wants i am commanding i want you to do this and the student should just follow should have entire discipline in the class this is the sergeant type of teacher many a times they may be strict dictators but their intention may be different though they are dictators they may be dictating because they want to instill in their students a value of discipline they want to have a structured classroom and they want the students to work hard these teachers they want their students to reach their full potential means whatever abilities the student has the teachers want them to bring out their full potential and develop the whole potential they have okay they know that if they have the students have to bring, uh, come out with the full abilities then the students need to put in hard work so that is why they are always asking students to work hard taking on a strict authoritarian role sometimes what is the negative part of it the negative part of being authoritarian is the teacher will not be able to form bonds with uh, the students It means they will not be able to maintain good relationship with the students so many times what happens the students will mistake the teacher to be very strict and they don't want to express their feelings with the teacher so teachers with this personality type sometimes they need to exercise more of patience they need to show more of empathy if they want really to be a mentor to the students so for students who are willing to take up the challenge then the target teachers can become an important driving force for the education and personality development of the students okay especially for these uh, sergeant type of teachers uh, this uh, task which they have to take up is time management okay because they you know they are sergeant type of teachers so they always think that time is very important so they will work on managing their time very well never wasting their time the second type of the teacher is the parental teacher okay this teacher personality has a strong nurturing instinct uh, instinct they genuinely want their students to succeed and they are willing to invest a lot of time and energy in helping the students means these teachers put in much of their energy helping students parental teachers when we look into the spectrum they fall between the passionate type and the personality type they uh, these teachers fall in between them they are passionate about teaching and are able to also form 
trusting relationship and bond with the student this is what is the parental type of teacher this teacher finds this uh, system education system to be very restrictive ekendre nim classroom na nim manage maadi within this time maintain this relationship with the child idella institutions helodrinda many a times they tempt to bend some rules for the benefit of the students there are teachers who sometimes bend the rules for the benefit of the students they are the parental type because they are very sympathetic sometimes student take advantage of them this the teacher should be very careful uh, once uh, uh, you salpa namag rules bend martare martare antakshana students are also not very innocent they also try to work towards gaining uh, advantage of the teacher so that is where this teacher personality type will need sometimes to always exercise their authority also but what happens for this parental type of personality because they are ready to spend time and energy on students many a times they get overburdened with their work they need to learn to draw some emotional boundaries so that they will be able to do, do their job well tumba emotional age yavaglu yochane madade kelu sari disciplinarian kagi kuda act madodanna kalibekagutte idu parental teacher adre so but when a parental teacher learns to employ a level of discipline then they will reach their potential as an educator they will become very good educators okay then we have the other type that is the aloof teacher the teacher who stays aloof students get confused with their enduring appearance with indifference andre avaru salpa strict agi irodrinda athwa separate agi irodrinda students ge ivu indifferent agidare nam kadage annu anta ketta bhavane barodukku sadhyate ide but an aloof teacher actually loves their job they just don't want to over protect their students andre students our decisions our thogalli now avarge over protection kodbardu annodu is the this type of teacher they try to strike a balance between patience and discipline because they are uh, they are able to easily gain the students respect ekandre they don't mingle with students they stay away so normally student uh, try to keep them aloof and then re- give high respect to this type of teacher then they want a structured classroom so that they will be able to work well in the system so this type of teachers are very practical practical means if they have to take up some job if it is of use then do it otherwise do not do it okay it is they are of that type they are always available for students if the students want help from them okay though they are aloof the teachers also have a lighter side and this only students who are very close to them will be able to recognize the softer side of this teacher okay there is another type of teacher who is called said to be a reluctant teacher who is this reluctant teacher this is the teacher we know all of us have not come into teaching sometimes it was not our first choice uh, we, uh, maybe our choices were different but still some of we wanted a job we got this and we have come into this there are such type of teachers also this is sad but it is really true so there are plenty of them okay who have sometimes come into with passion but because of the situation they may have lost their passion after many years of teaching also these reluctant teachers are very practical and they are straight forward they don't waste their time even giving time to students they think is a waste of time these are the reluctant teachers excuse me ma'am yeah uh, sorry to interrupt ma'am ma'am we want some time for discussions also because it's uh, from 1 to 2 it's a lunch break but uh, still we want yeah. some time for discussion it's already 1 5 okay another 5 minutes we'll just finish and we will have time for discussion okay now for this personality type of uh, uh, teachers uh, 
uh, they don't want to take up anything extra work to do for students or to teach them or develop some learning material for students they don't want to do anything extra okay then we have the visa teacher these are the teachers who we say are born to be teachers eshtra sari helthiv navu your teacher agakke huttirad huttirad ivaru anta means they are prodigies in their jobs they act like magicians they can do any type of uh, uh, work they can maintain good relationship with students kind of time they love their job personality type of teachers they are very enthusiastic they are passionate about the learning experience and materials they are very spontaneous and very tactful in their teaching okay? then they prefer hands on participation with students they encourage students to question them okay then they develop curiosity to learn in students okay this is that type of a teacher then we have the body teacher these teachers are those 154 yeah yeah who maintain uh, relationship with good relationship with students then um, okay no just try to analyze among these types of this sergeant parental buddy type reluctant wizard and aloof type of a teacher to which category do you belong okay sometimes you may be a mixture of two okay and depending upon the situation maybe we take up all these types of uh, roles also so so a uh, effective teacher is one who will be able to take the role of all these types depending upon the situation and the type of student we get okay so uh, i think with this there are some studies also like who have classified or categorized teachers there is one famous study which categorizes teacher like uh, those who prefer their profession first teachers who prefer their students first teachers who prefer the institution educational institution first okay so this is one personality then also there is another uh, category where a study taken up by ryans they uh, he categorizes teacher into different personality calling the friendly type of teacher and a teacher who is of full understanding and warmth and teachers who are distant and cold means who maintain distance with the child so there are classification based on very uh, 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 personality of the student uh, the way they react to the students the way they react to their profession so this is how how teachers must shape their students they should create positivity create act understand the strength and weakness they should teach the students the problem solving skills then teacher should set high expectations of students so that they will increase the self esteem of the students okay then uh, indulge in inqu inquisitive mind develop confidence in students and adopt student centered approaches in their teaching then allow outlet of emotions means they should we know they are young adults they are very delicate and they have an impressionable psyche so that we should allow an outlet of emotions okay and with this i think we will i'll try to end if you just look into this picture do you get any idea who is the teacher who is the student here there is a swan there is a child sleeping on the swan swan is a teacher the swan is the teacher if you see if the swan it appears as though it is swimming very coolly on top of water uh, does it so coolly just wade away in water it is continuously working below right it is uh, continuously uh, you see that its feet will be working below the water so the teacher is like that where uh, for appearance outside it looks as though the job of a teacher is very easy but if you have to take just one hour of class we know how much efforts we have to put in so that we just take the student along very comfortably for him to learn okay so this is the job of a teacher so somehow i like this picture very much so just i took it and then i thought i will just compare it with the teacher okay
with this i think we will finish our session today anything you want to discuss we can have a discussion or any views you want to share upon on personality of the teacher and personality development of the student or any any such incidents or cases which you can discuss with others and want to share in your experience that also we can uh, just uh, share for some time many a times as a teacher we would have come across some students okay and our uh, guidance to them might have changed their lives such experiences you want to share also we will we can share here uh, friends if there are no questions please uh, one of the participant come forward and uh, propose order thanks to dr sheila madam and please please stay on line i have on uh, instruction to you people okay okay thank you sir madam. Uh, madam. dr sheila ji madam ravaru ಬೆಳಗ್ಗೆಯಿಂದ ನಮಗೆ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ರೋಲ್ ಇನ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಒಂದು ಭಾಗ ಮತ್ತೆ ಭಾಗ ಎರಡು ಎರಡು ಕೂಡ ತುಂಬಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ನಮ್ಗೆ ತಿಳುವಳಿಕೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ರಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ನಿಮಗೆ ಎಚ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿ ಸಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಕೋಆರ್ಡಿನೇಟರ್ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಮತ್ತೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಚ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿ ಸಿ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಬಹಳ ಮುಖ್ಯವಾಗಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಪರವಾಗಿ ತುಂಬಾ ಹೃತ್ಪೂರ್ವಕವಾದಂತ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳನ್ನ ತಿಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಮೇಡಮ್ thank you madam uh, thank thanks a lot for giving me the opportunity to spend a time uh, with all of you and your patient hearing for such a long time at least if i am successful in uh, uh, changing a little of uh, your views on personality and the role you play in the development of the personality and the shaping the life of your students i think that much is enough uh, for me today uh, for having spent time with you thank you i also thank the hrdc and the director and uh sir ranjan swami sir and everybody for having uh, invited me uh, for this special lecture thank you all of you thank you madam thank you thank you madam thank you thank you thank you participants uh, i request those teacher participants uh, in uh, working on deputation please be online the remaining participants can leave the session uh, you can join the session at 155 i need only those teacher this is related to the certificate okay so i request the participants who are working in one place and deputy to another place please those teachers will stay yaro yava teacher ondu kelasa avaru ruttiyanna deputation alli ondu kade original person kade ide antha avaru matra line alli ulkoli ulidoru session inda leave aagi please do it fast okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh, six participants have this problem i think is it uh no please okay 1 2 3 4 5 okay uh 124 sir 124 is vinayak sautigi maatade nan jothe vinayak sautigi ವಿನಾಯಕ್ ಸೌಟಿಗೆ ಹಲೋ ರಿಪ್ಲೈ ಮಾಡಿ ನನಗೆ ಹಲೋ ಹಲೋ ಸರ್ ಹೇಳಿ ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ ಆನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಜೋರಾಗಿ ಬರ್ತಾಡಿ ಹಾ ಸರ್ ಹೇಳಿ ಸರ್ ವಾಲ್ಯೂಮ್ ಕೊಡಿ ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ ವಾಲ್ಯೂಮ್ ಕೊಡಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಹಾ ಸರ್ ಒಂದು ನಿಮಿಷ ನೀವು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ ವಾಲ್ಯೂಮ್ ಕೊಡಿ ಓಕೆ ಸರ್ ಈ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಜೋರಾಗಿ ಮಾತ್ ಇದು ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ ವಾಲ್ಯೂಮ್ ಕೊಡಿ ಹಾ ಸರ್ ಹೇಳಿ ಸರ್ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ ವಾಲ್ಯೂಮ್ ಕೊಡಿ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಸರ್ ಇನ್ನು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕೊಡಿ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಫುಲ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಸರ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ನೀ ಪಕ್ಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಕೊ ಮಾತಾಡಿದೆ ಉಳಿದವರು ಇಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಓಕೆ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಕುರುಡೆ ಗೌಡ್ರೆ ನೀವು ಮಾತಾಡಿ ಸರ್ ಹೇಳಿ ಸರ್ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಏನು ಇದು ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಒಂದ ಕಡೆ ಡೆಪ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಒಂದ ಕಡೆ ಇದ್ದೀರಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಒಂದೇ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಲೀವ್ ಆಗಿ ಓಕೆ ಲೀವ್ ಆಗಿ ಒಂದೇ ಉದಯ ಬರ್ತಿ ಲಾಕ್ ಔಟ್ ಅದು ಮಾಡಿ ಲಾಕ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ 
ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ಐದು ತಾರೀಕು ಲಿಂಕ್ಗೆ ಬನ್ನಿ ಇವಾಗ ಲಾಗೌಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಓಕೆ ಲಾಗೌಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಬಿಡ ಬಿಡ್ರೆ ಲಾಗೌಟ್ ಆಗಿ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಪ್ಲೈ ಒನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಹಲೋ ನಂಬರ್ ಒನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಪ್ಲೈ ಮಲ್ಲಿಕಾರ್ಜುನ ಎಂ ಒನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಪ್ಲೈ ಮಲ್ಲಿಕಾರ್ಜುನ ಎಂ ಓಕೆ ಒನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಒನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಭಾವನಾ ಜಿ ಈಗ ನೀವು ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಎಲ್ಲಿದ್ದೀರಾ ನೀವು ಸರ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಸರ್ ರೀಜನಲ್ ಆಫೀಸ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಂ ಸಿ ಮೇಲೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಆ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ನೂ ಇನ್ನೂ ಮೂರು ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ನಡೀತಾ ಇದೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಆ ಕಡೆ ಪದೇ ಪದೇ ನಾನು ಗಮನಿಸಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ನಿಮ್ನ ಲೈನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇರಲಿ ನಿಮ್ ಜೊತೆ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತೇನೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಒಂದ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಹಂಗೆ ರೀ ನಾನು ಸರ್ಟಿಫೈಡ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ನೋಡ್ಕೊಳ್ತೇನೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ನೀವು ನೋಡಿ ಸರ್ಟಿಫೈಡ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಚೆಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಕರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೇಬೇಕು ಬ್ರೇಕ್ ತಗೊಂಡಾಗ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಟೈಮ್ ಟೇಬಲ್ ಇದೆ ಓಕೆ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಭಾವನ ಎಷ್ಟು ಮೇಡಮ್ ಇದು ಭಾವನ ಜಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಪಿ ಜಿ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶ್ವರಾಯ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿಕಲ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಮುದ್ದೇನಹಳ್ಳಿ ಇದು ಸರ್ಟಿಫಿಕೇಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇರಬೇಕು ಸರ್ಟಿಫಿಕೇಟ್ ಇರಬೇಕಾ ಇದು ಇರಬೇಕು ಸರ್ಟಿಫಿಕೇಟ್ಲಿ ಚೌಗ್ಲೆ ಸವಿತಾ ಚೌಗ್ಲೆ ಮೇಡಮ್ ನೀವು ಅಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಕನಾಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಗೌರ್ನಮೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಉಮನ್ಸ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ 
deputation sir ad deputation ad idu deputation lira place ah ha deputation original post elli ide nimdu original rani parvati devi one nimsha adanna correction barididira nevu ha ala correction kodu kottara nevu barididilla sir alli ha kottilla sir kottilla amale vaasu kelsa maadi nevu correction in certificate andu buttu nanu ondu sms idu maadi whatsapp group alli haki nanage ಹಾಕಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಸರ್ ಬೇರೆ ಏನು ಮಾತಾಡ್ಬೇಡಿ ನಾನು ಕೇಳಿದ್ದಕ್ಕೆ ಸರಿಯಾಗಿ ಉತ್ತರ ಕೊಡಿ ಉಡೇ ಉಡ್ರೆ ನಾನ್ ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇದ್ರೆ ನೀವು ಏನು ವಿಷಯ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತೀರಾಫಿಕೇಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮೇಲ್ ಐ ಡಿ ಬರೀತೀನಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ವಿಷಯ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಿರೋದು ಸರ್ಟಿಫಿಕೇಟ್ ನೀವೇ ಇಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ವಿಷಯ ಏನಿದೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಮಾತಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಷ್ಟೇ ನನ್ನ ಜೊತೆ ಸರಿ ಓಕೆ